Welcome back to the ECS Season 2 Finals Day. It is Championship Sunday and we are into our second semi-final. Welcome back to the analysis area where we have Sean Garris alongside Yanko. Sean, um, interesting first map, but in the end the gamble on cash hasn't paid off for SK. And, and Astralis, once they looked a little bit dodgy at places, they have 10-1 up and then 10-9, they've come through relatively easy. Yeah, you could tell Astralis did a lot of homework on what SK liked to do earlier in the turn on cash. And they did a lot of job, jobs, good jobs like countering it, not over-rotating being in the right spots and just basically like allowing SK to take areas of the map and then like push back into them with numbers. Yeah, and Yanko, you were you were watching specifics from SK because they were very crisp yesterday in their executions on cash, not quite as crisp today though. Yeah, I, I feel like it was because Astralis forced them to change their play style with how they approach the CT side. Mostly device with the AWP, he was very aggressive at the beginning of the round and on different spots on the map, towards B, towards A main, towards Squeaky. And that forced SK to play more slow, more methodical. You could see that a couple of times they would lose the round because the time runs out. Uh, another time they, they would barely win it with you know seven seconds left, they plant the bomb. Sure, SK sometimes plays like that. They, they have executes or or defaults that, that end up being like that, but not through the majority of the half. So the, we have an example of how it, uh, so similar, basically the same execute they went for yesterday yep. uh, in, in their cash game and it worked perfectly. But here because of you know small differences, small adjustments, mostly from Astralis, it, it completely fell apart for them. So you see them setting up uh, for the nades, similar stuff, carpet bombing the DA bomb site, smokes towards uh, highway as well, but device is having a, a more forward position here with the AWP and that's super important because he can, he has like forward vision and he can give information to his team that the rest of the SK team is basically just not towards A main, but they're going towards mid, as you can see here, fast forwarded. So he gets the info and not just that, he also gets the initial kill on fur Kirby as well towards uh, mid has a more forward position gets uh, uh, information that they are going towards the site as well Dupree has good timing coming from uh, Z connector to shoot them in the back so because of all of uh, these things you can see that device is still staying alive towards the very end because he is the he only had fur to challenge him in that area and that's a very hard position to negate uh, device after you lose that first man because you've spent most of your utility for the execute he has an op there and as you can see it was impossible to get rid of him yeah it's quite interesting isn't it Sean when you break it down like when Yanko breaks yeah. it down like that anyway that you can see something that happened yesterday and they, they did it perfectly yesterday it looked fantastic when they did it yesterday and you thought wow that's so crisp and clean and then depending on who they play depends on actually how how good the execute is well, I think a lot of it depends on the B rotator that's coming through the Z, and in this case it was Dupree. If you watched the replay yesterday, something I noticed right away was the rotator on that team I think went to the truck. It was very slow. And um, typically when you rotate out of the B bomb site in cash, you should be picking up mid so that way your teammates at A don't get flanked, yep. similar to what happened yesterday, and that's literally exactly why. And you can see Dupree literally played perfectly off of, I think it was KJB. Um, uh, yeah, highway. Yeah. He yeah. Wasn't highway. yeah, so like the second he took contact, he swung out of Z and got two hills in the back. Yeah. Difference is information, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. You know, you know what's coming early on. You see the smokes, but you only get one kill. And uh, Kirby sees the players in mean, and you know what's coming. And the reason why Dupree got two kills in the back is because the device was still alive, and you just can't have a player pushing highway and looking at Z. He has to yeah. look towards the site and take control of the site first so I, I think it was a, a great display of CT side uh, aggressiveness so, mm. so to speak but when you have a single op setup that's how you want to play you basically are forcing the T's to spend a lot more utility in their default to get information and get map control mm. also got a clip uh, from Fallen as well which you oh gonna, this is great that we had time for this this was yeah. actually 13-9 and this was the, the round for SK that they had to win you can see Fox Looking at from first person, he's like, what is Fox doing? Why is he like, why is he just hiding? But you can see that he's waiting for Fallen. Fallen probably gave him the call. I'm coming in with a flash, just wait for it. And he's waiting and waiting, but the timing is off. So it's too late. They already swarm him from both mm. positions and he just dies in a silly way. But it's a matter of being unlucky. If that flash comes in a second earlier, both players are probably blind. He gets both kills and the round is over and, and SK still has a chance to come back into the game. This was 39, 49, Eco 59, and, and that's where the game ends. And you actually saw that exact flash work for Fox maybe two rounds earlier when they stopped the B hit. Yeah, yeah, it's just 
and like you say, it's a second split decision that makes, <laughs> yeah. a, makes I mean, a decision it's a on the whole round. Matter of perspective, yeah. when you just look at Fox, like, why is he not peaking? Why yeah. is he waiting? But you look at the big picture, you see what the thought process was, but unfortunately the timing didn't mm. work out. A little bit more connected, perhaps, in terms yeah. of team, and that might have been uh, a different outcome. Um, from SK's point of view, they're down. They've taken a bit of a gamble on cash. It hasn't paid off. They now move on to overpass, which we saw on day one, they were awful on. And second day, actually, they seem to be a little bit more comfortable. I, I know they've moved Fox around a little bit, swapped him out with Cold Zero. So, do you still think they've got a chance of coming back into this and taking this to game three? Or is this now so far in advance for Astranas to take this that there's not really much hope for them? I think there definitely is a chance. I mean, Sean mentioned it when we were, we were talking uh, off, off fair that that game at E-League was more SK losing the game than it was Astralis winning it. It was that crazy clutch from Zipex where, okay, SK misplayed it playing too aggressive, but you had a couple of rounds like that turning points in the game and the result was still close at the very end. If, if they don't make those types of mistakes, SK wins that map. So here, uh, I think they're a team that can definitely bounce back, but uh, I think the confidence and the momentum is on Astralis' side. Okay, all right, we're gonna get some more from Sean and from Yanko, of course, after the break. Are we headed to a 2-0 straight victory and a march to the final, or are we gonna get three maps? Let's find out as we rejoin our commentary team, Henry G and Sadakist. Thank you very much. Yes, another map that I think this one, much like Train, both teams can play. The question is, who could play it with you know, the difference in chunt lineups. Glaive's definitely proved he's fit in very well. Fox is still like climatizing himself to sure. sort of where they are right it's now. And yesterday position. we saw some change-ups. This is a map that they've, they've struggled on on day one, successful on on day two, but only just, and now they play it with probably their toughest opponent on day three. They're getting better on it. That, that's the yeah. good news here. The problem is Cash was SK's pick. This is where Astralis want to be playing. They're very, very good on this. Their B bomb side is uh, absolute strong arms yeah. there. They're not going to be l allowing them to actually get into that bomb side easy. That's why SK try to find most of their rounds, a lot of execution sort of area, lots of contact plays there. And the B bomb side, especially for the CD side of SK, that's been a problem in the past as well. They started to get better though. Yesterday we saw it. They have made adjustments here, but let's get into this one, ladies and gentlemen. Second map of the best of three. Loser goes home and the winner goes on to see Optic in the grand finals. It will be SK on the CD side here. Good news for them. We do say they want to start on those easier sides. It certainly is a CD sided map overall. Four sets of armor for Astralis. One smoke in the hand of Glaive. He's got a flashbang as well. As we get into this one, nothing really given away so far. Astralis have got connect control. Three players towards that position. Just flushing out these hallways and making sure no CT confrontation will be coming in. No real aggression from the CDs at all. They have one player towards long. That's fair. And someone in the middle as well. That was Fallen holding off these initial encounters. Ferd did make contact with the vice far out, but backs away smartly because they'd already made the way inside bath. If oh. made that call, he would have been left sitting out at long. Either way, he gets taken down to free from far. Smoke off from Fallen. He's got the kit smoke. He's used it already. He's got the headshot, so he's no armor and he gets punched around. Dupree's picked up two. Bomb's gonna go down quite quickly. They're not gonna go for leap ball plant because of the rotation. Good boost at the fence as well. Denies, to, excuse me, Zipix. The chance of trying to plant right away, but having taken down the back lines, pushing them back, they're going to be able to confidently put that down now with bathroom control. So Cold, next one to come up the line from Bank. Gets there just too late to catch off Zipix, who's now going to smoke himself off out toward Long. I take that back, actually. It was just a decoy going down. Either way, Fox is going to try and find the information first. They picked up the kit that Fallen dropped, so a bit of a chance to try and play this out a little bit longer. He tries to tap, doesn't quite get that far, but they've got to get kills before he can commit to it. They're not finding it. Now they are tackle only the one, though. Fox will hunt down a low HP on Zipix, but struggles to get the shots in time and has to go for the reload. This buys more opportunity for Astralis. That said, Kirby tagged up. If he finds this next kill, gets it down to a one-on-one. -on -one. He's pretty much going to get on it, commit to it, just hold it. Best luck if he finds it. Not going to happen. He tries to go for the crouch just to throw off the hitbox, but Glaive is there. Yeah, it's an impossible situation there. The only chance he's got is going for the full defuse, and at that point, if Davis gets him off the bomb, the round's over. So very easy 1v1 there. It does come down to the 1v1, which is, I guess, better than it could have been. They actually went down to a 5-on-3 while the bomb was planted there. Quite quick stuff from Astralis. Default to kick things off. Played out the connector as well. Got some long control, pushed the CDs back. It was fur challenging towards Long, as you said, and he got a completely wrecked at the start there. Pushing through their own smoke, Astralis managed to find Fallen. A site completely overwhelmed at that point, and it's going to be an almost impossible round for SK. The fact they found so many kills is actually pretty beneficial. They will be sort of forcing up in the second round. We've got a scout for Fallen, some Deagles and body armor as well. A couple of flashbangs with Dupree. Looking to shut them down nice and early. Good work from him towards Jordi by Sacco. And Kiabi, he's charming in as well. Five on three, just like that. Kiabi with that shot. Now go back over to Ward Monster. It takes oh. up two. It was down before he can convert either into kills. It does benefit the pistols, but there's only two of them left, and right now only one of them inside the B site. Rotation coming over toward the window from Fur. But even so still, slow it down tremendously. A minute 16. 
I had a, I had a moment to swap. Okay, this might get a little bit interesting here. I won't finish the point just yet. There we go. So I had a, a chance to catch up with the guys outside. So I was kind of interested. You know those mid-round calls we had in the 2v2s yes. before? I was kind of interested to say, like, is that Glaive calling for you guys um, in those sort of situations? And it is. When, even when he's dead, he's telling them exactly what to do. So that kind of shows you the kind of influence he has on this team and the control he has. There was such intelligent mid-round calls he was making. So I just was very interested to see whether it was him and actually him controlling the team or not. So that's actually quite cool just to think like he's actually so involved in the team. Normally when an in-game leader dies, they normally just be quiet at that point, but he's actually invested throughout the round. He's pretty dead. Shot from Fur. As we mentioned, the tag on Zipix could now be beneficial to the pistols. Guns down where you can, but that's not going to happen any further. They can get the bomb fight after the round. So a little bit of injection toward Glaive, but either way, it's going to be Astralis with two and SK without weapons. They've got to sit a little bit longer. We have to analyze this CT side because that's the issue that they've had in the most part. The rotations in day one were very off. We talked about the lack of coordination on the B side in particular when Dignitas beat them up on it. Yeah, it was like the synergy, I think was the operative word I was using that. It didn't seem to be playing off each other. It's two like separate situations going on. The flashbangs weren't really there. They didn't have a lot of timings going on. Nothing aggressive at all. They were quite just flat in that position. This is a full can now for SK. They will be going towards the connect position. This can be relatively successful, you know. It's a real tight choke point. You don't really want to go with any anti You just want to go so much towards long when you've got the rifles, etc. And there it is. Device with the MAC-10. He'll just be farming money for days. He'll just MAC-10 buying three kills. And that's going to be the round over at this point. It's going to be far with Taco as well pushing towards the Zipex, watching the flanks. And he finds one kill on Dupree to finish things off. 3 0. And it's going to be a great start for Astralis here on the T side. We really wanted SK to win the pistol on this one. We know it's a weaker map for them. They do get the AWP in the hands of Fallen. He must have been dropped that scout before. So he gets an AWP out. No head armor, not a big deal against these AK 47s. So that's fine. It will be Device actually upgrading to the AWP. I assume he threw his. Max and away after farming so much money, which makes sense. Like, we love the bonus round, but you want to be make sure you actually convincingly winning rounds going forward in device. He's such a strong AWP player. You want him to have this weapon in hand. And smartly so, because Fallen's going to have his on the other side of the map. And Fallen already getting quite aggressive out toward long as he so often does. Not playing the flower pot this time, but forward to the bathroom connection point. Meanwhile, fast play toward construction for Kirby and Dupree. They want to take over some map control, and Kirby's going to get up close. Similar to what Get Right tends to do with NIP. Try and play off sound cues. He'll leave. Dupree will take over that role instead. So they can sit just on that ledge up close inside construction and hear anything going on inside of the site. Any rotations get a chance to try and spot out the positions before, or rather hear out the positions before they go inside of the site. But that'll slow things off, and no one's gone over to find Fallen's AWP. This is also one of the calls we have to talk about, because they were playing more of a single op setup on day one. Given the economy, they couldn't get the second op out onto Fox. But Fallen was making most of his plays over toward A. As soon as they rotated over to B, it was MSL on Dignitas that called it and went back toward the A set. So they've got to be very ahead of the play with SK's side, especially with the weapons. Nothing really inflicted just yet. As far as I was looking at, though, we ending up towards the B site of an execution with the smokes being lined up as well. You normally want to smoke the bomb site heaven and the CT entrance as well. You Molotov towards barrels and then try and get in as quickly as you can and overwhelm the CT's cold zero. It was normally Fox playing this position on the first day. They have adjusted things. There's the Molotov. It's a flush out attacker. He's got to run through. An absolute gauntlet there. He goes on the 7 HP. Very well placed Molotovs. Oh, very well placed flash though, but everyone's blinded up and Cold's got the back's turn too. When he gets his vision back, it's two for him. On a Famas finding a third potentially, but Zipix is there with an AK. Kirby walks in, smokes himself in reverse because he doesn't want anyone to flank back down from mid-connector. It's him and his teammates trying to still get a bomb plant down and Zipix will run through and do exactly that. Device will set the op toward Taco's position. Smart shot from Fox. This will give Fallen some room as well because down to just two make it one. Device is pinched in. Fallen's getting ever closer. He's got a peek. It does, but at the exact moment he goes away, doesn't see him and Fallen lines it up. They've got the retake. Very successful from SK. Yeah. And a good read. I mean, Taco loves to play those barrels, but the flash comes through and Cole just rips them apart. Yeah, the flashes look like they actually got Astralis there at the same time. So Taco, he actually has an absolute wall of fire to run through. He goes under 7 HP. It's Cole's error. Almost gifted. You can see the flashes come in and you can see that they're flashed by the, their own devices at that point and it's going to be Cole's error. He comes on blind and finds two in front of him. That's the difference maker. Probably can't believe what happened there, but he'll take it all day long and a double orb setup comes in for SK at this point. Astralis still have a lot of money. They can buy the AWP once more. It was a decent approach, but the execution was almost perfect as those flashbangs not really working out too well for them. We're going to round number five now. Not so much full reset potential, but it won't be a pretty buy if SK were to lose this round. So the double orb setup as well. Let's see what they bring to the table. Presumably something a little bit more aggressive. Want to try and get that first pick. Have an orb and B, and then Fallen being a little bit more dynamic. Oh, it's going to go to the same position he was last round with this AWP on A, but no one was there to face him off. Interestingly enough, it's called Zero. The second one who's going to peek out towards short right now. We know he likes to be aggressive. Indeed. We did discuss for Fox being the 
second for the Orpa, but Caldera picks it up and he fancies it towards that B site. And I think that's a great place to put it. If you can have an orb blocking it down, you can have just two players there and three towards A. And as we're going for some long control now, the flashes will come in and device presumably be challenging Fallen, who's actually occupying the bathroom position right now. Still waiting for that opportunity of anyone to go long devices there, getting ever closer. WP nails the shot! <laughs> I don't even know if he was... A I'd have to see that from his perspective. I don't know if that was a flick because he was looking toward Flower Pot or not, but it looks like Fallen almost walks out. Exactly what Cold does as Zipix sprays down too. All the kills going Astralis' way. And this is after only one gun round going into the hands of SK, so they can pull this back, but Bomb drop down for Fur. He's still in a very tight position because he can be pushed from the backside of bathrooms as well, so he needs to still fight forward. That's exactly that. Smart nade. Jumps out though, and I'm not sure I agree with the jump in that case. Device just waiting with the AWP. Fox is almost caught with his knife out. One versus four, Astralis collect. Well then, Device, what an incredible shot that was. I'm sure we'll see it from his POV momentarily, but that looked astonishing. It was uh, an absolute mind blowing experience in him. He's a very, very good AWP, and this is the reaction from the CTs. They're trying to push the monster tunnel there, but Zipex holding the flanks. Holding his nerve as well, gets on the 16 HP, he picks up both frags at that point. And here's a device taking down the jumping approach from Bell. I have to agree, like, at that point he has to make something happen, right? He wants to give that surprise factor. Jumping out won't necessarily be the best port of call, but he's trying to bait out the shot and hopefully device misses it. That's what he's going for there. So an eco here for SK Gaming, you can see Glaive, he picks up the MP7, a very mobile and efficient weapon against unarmed players, so that's absolutely perfect for him. And farm some extra cash as well for a little bit more aggressive towards me. He's actually got four players around him as well, so can be have his work cut out for him. He's actually alone towards middle as he goes around the corner here. Okay, not a problem, it seems. <laughs> That's quite a shot. <laughs> Bye, Fur. Thanks for playing today. Better luck next time. Still going to push on the QB as well after all of that. Uh, around the corner, they actually do manage to pick him up. It's Fox with the to be. CZ and exactly that. Device grabs bomb, gets away. He's low on HP. He's got to be so careful. Fallen's already behind him. He's going to the right, though. He's trying to bait the back around, and thankfully Zipix come to his ale. Because he's going to spot him out. Taco goes the other way to be instead. Fox has picked up an AK. That might be worth just holding on to. I think that's the plan at this point in time. I know it seems a long time to wait with a minute left in the round and Bomb not even close to B just yet. Yeah, well, still go towards B here. You've got three players on low HP, but like you said, save that AK. It's probably going to be the best approach at this point. You're not going to win this round. So Taco, see what he can do here against uh, low HP players. Smoked out for now, though the bomb will be planted. That's going to be round over at this point. Fox probably going to be hiding in the bar from Jesse is and uh, just holding on to that weapon and trying to boost the economy going forward. Device playing with fire a little bit. You're very low HP. P, and he's going to go for the shot regardless. Oh. Surely he'll be punished for it, but does take down Taco. Nice work from him. And just Fox remaining, like we said, saving the weapon going forward. The money is going to sit on around the, uh, just over, the, well, just under the 3k mark average. And they're going to have second save loss bonus. So they can get a buyout. It won't be the best. A couple of players will be on Famuses here. With Fox saving the AK, that certainly helps things out. He can drop a weapon over. So maybe just one Famus here. And he will be saving. You can see no one on the minimap anywhere near him. He's, yeah, he's, he was sitting in that bathroom just from the minute mark. Could have put some attention into trying to chase him down by delaying the bomb plan, perhaps, but no need. Take wins where you can get them. 5-1 now for Astralis. Another fast, early lead, and SK struggling again on their CT side. We mentioned they've got to keep guns up. They went to the double op. One round didn't work. Fallen goes single this time. It's all they can afford. Actually, I take that back. Cold could have grabbed one. They go for full utility on him instead. Well, do you get the AWP out here? But yeah, glass cannon for Fallen. These sort of rounds, when you are slightly limited, you want to maybe take him, take a good spot like this. If Fallen hasn't gone towards B yet, he can maybe get boosted up towards the B platform there, or maybe push towards Monster Tunnel. We'll see what he decides to do. Look at that boost, I think. Four members on B. He is indeed. Fox is going to put him up. Fur's the only one soloing A with this. So that was one of the questions we had. If they were going to play the single and they were going to be dynamic with that AWP, who would swap to A? Well, seemingly no one. Yeah, there's a bit of a gamble here trying to get that initial pick with the AWP. It's a nice little adjustment from them. Something we haven't seen as of yet. Just this one player towards the A side. You're absolutely right, it's going to be fair, but he's going very passively, just looking for a little bit of information, fall back, and a lot of the rotations coming from his teammates. That will be the one to rotate. They're committing to that boost. It's fairly common, even if you go toward the A side, that eventually someone's going to make their presence inside that construction position. Hoping he can just find the one pick. Predominantly putting his attention onto that short pipe rather than the doorway. But they'll give up on it now because Fallen's realized 55 seconds. They've not shown anything. Chances are the bulk of the players over toward A. He's going to try and get there. Not playing Park Sign as he often does. He's going to try and get to forward front bathroom. Glaive and Kirby are already around Flower Pot as well with a boost at Park Sign. Cold's going to watch this. We saw a clever tactic from Dignitas yesterday where they played a third man strategy with Volda on the left so that they popped out and played off long. But not going to be doing that this time around. Zipix picks up one over toward B. Again, they do pass through that position, but late. It's 
Pulled Fallen back though because they find that big pick. Boost, down they go. Glaive walks in. <laughs> I'll take out the stilts below your feet, and as you fall, I'll find you two for it's gonna be out. Both of them down and out. Bomb planted immediately in bathrooms. Covered off. See the AWP. Ooh, if that's because he gets taken a shot through the fence, and then Kirby's already wrapped down the stairs behind, and that's gone. Textbook ground from Estrada said. Supex opening things up towards the B side. I think it was Taco. He's a little bit aggressive towards Shaw. He gets picked off, and then very quietly they make their way towards A. Up towards long, undetected for so long. Caldera has to nail that first shot to even stand a chance of making that situation possible for them. But it's Glaive. He finds one, and the second player is boosted at that point. He has no chance of recovering. He goes down as well, and that should be the money in the bin at this point. Fox saving the AK once more. He is on I five for four time. right now, but yes, and, uh, the hounds are coming. It seems as he'll be hiding towards the CD entrance. Gets one, but going to be going down momentarily. There it is. Burns to a crisp. And the hands of KRB and four players survive for Astralis. And in a fantastic position right now. Another weekend for SK. And 6 1 on the T side. This is their pick as well. We know overpass can be weak for SK, so not looking too good right now. This is that one I'm talking about. As soon as Glaive gets his first pick here, Coldera maybe gets to drop it in there, but it's a nice wide pick from Glaive. Takes them both down. And KRB finds the upper as well. What a hell of a shot that was. Yeah, all things considered, I mean, only a 12 HP, but yeah, it was a lovely shot. Well, then. Pistols, 6-1, yep. looking 7-1. Yeah, this should be a 7-1. A nice little contact play towards B, maybe. Some presence from Blade towards middle. And it's, yeah, contact in straight away. Take the jewels at this point. They have the first kills. One of barrels as well. Might get one kill there. Gets a headshot towards the bite. Have to wait for his teammates to help him out. Maybe ever commits a little bit there, I have to say. Could have just let Dupree deal with that. But he takes a lot of damage as well, to be fair. Still going to be a, a round win, presumably, for Astralis. But Fallen getting an interesting position. Coming up the flank from T-Spawn here. Two players on the flank and flat. In fact, he's got fur with him. Smoke out from Dupree is smartly placed there for because they can't push it through Monster and get vision. Again, remember, he's low. Good pick from Zipix as they cross over the other pipe. We'll wait as well for the further. It's on the map. Fox trying to wait for inside a squeaky. Any kill they get, any gun they grab, beneficial at this point in time. They're sitting with the exit bombs been planted for a while, and safe escape is back through the CT stairs. Do Astralis fancy it? Looks like they do. They're going to head that direction right now. No kits. Can't leave 100% yet, but most teams, I think, ever since the Snacks Ninja defuse sure. against FaZe, I think it was at the time, or G2 at the time. Yes, that's right on Mirage. Yeah. yeah. I think ever since then, teams have stopped. Uh, yeah, he ruined, uh, he ruined the Ninja Diffuse. Yeah. It was such a, such a dumb one that every other team said, all right, that's not happening to us. We that's had another sick one in Inferno as well. I it was, was Kirby when he was on Dignitas right, at the Major. Yeah. Stayed inside of what is now the chapel, I guess people are calling it, but construction. Yeah. They all left down Banana. He kills MBK, the only guy near the bomb. That's and diffused. Right. Yeah, that was awesome. Well then. We'll have a look at the loss bonus at this point. I think it's a fourth stage of the CTs. They finally get some money to buy once again. Not the best. You can see only one kit here, and it's going to be Fox with just an M4 and no utility whatsoever. But Fallen has got that orb. Having a rough game, though, so far. I think Fallen only has one frag. It's one for seven. A player you expect to be carrying SK when he has the AWP in hand. Can't really get rolling just yet. Device certainly got the upper hand at the moment. Round number nine. Full default for Astralis, waiting for any aggression towards middle. That is a signature of Fallen, pushing to that smoke, trying to get those first picks, but he looks a bit caged right now. Doesn't seem to have the same sort of flurry he normally has. Cole jumps across Monster with a nade down. So similar, actually. That usage of the nade is similar to what they try and do on Dust 2 with the mid doors, where they let the particles of the nade distract and obscure the vision long enough so the AWP player can't get the shot down mid. Interesting you see it used over at Monster. As Cole jumps straight across and gets position left side. Device will start to take the AWP up to where the party as well, but thinks otherwise, wants to look at it. He knows Fallen wants to play out that position, and he's there again. He's boosted up. I'm surprised more teams don't try and go for that corner boost that Guardian happily showed everyone to take him down, but no one's there. Come back away. Oh, this is going to be Zipex showing presence towards B once again. He now goes towards short and let's try and find that first pick. It's almost identical to that previous gun run we had before. Got some long control. He pushes CDs back. They're not really actually facing that position as well. And you can see whether Zipex can find anything towards B before they make their final move. Still just firing on some bullets here, speculatively. That's for He will in front of the smoke. Back to by Fallen as well in the bathroom. Just trying to find this next kill. Fallen. Oh. Can't quite get it. Shoulder baits it out, but Fur's gonna have to play this well because he's got smoke dissolving in front of him. Does find the first shot on Zipix, but that's gonna leave him susceptible to two other players rounding the corner, and he's bought himself some time in space. They're getting a little bit confused and tripping over each other, but they find the kills. Device to pre glaive all with one on the way through. That forces the rotations. Yeah, it wasn't the prettiest CS there, but they got the job done. No one really wanted to commit and then take the challenge with Fallen, but they finally get him in the end. Two players remaining now, no kits for the CT, but they have to rely on firepower alone. And Taco strikes first, takes down Glaive, three on two. Fallen away, back. Though, yep. They it's don't there. fancy it. 
if they don't have kits, yeah. and there's still three players with such good post plant, they've got to get out. Yeah, well, they get maximum loss bonus next round. They're saving two M4s. At least they'll be looking to the future at this point. Okay, I'll be, though, looking to lock them in towards his speed size. He'll be watching towards Shaw for now. Cold Zero and Taco. Taco with low HP as well. This is still very important. Should be the CD surviving at this stage. The device, he's still on the hunt, it seems. Hello? Got rid of that gun. Did he, divide, did he dive for the bomb device I there? think he did. Yeah. Inside the window room, you're still actually vulnerable to the blast radius because it goes through the floor, so... Well, the Stralis do have money for days. It's not really a huge problem. Um, but uh, SK Gaming do save two weapons out. Like we said, maximum loss bonus. So $3,400. It's not really ideal on a CT side. They only get 34 but save two M4s. You can maybe drop a couple of families in there, balance the books a little bit in that sense. But 8-1 on the T side of overpass. Looking very, very promising indeed for Australia. Haven't really broken a sweat just yet. Famous AK, three M4s. They have got a couple of kits and some utility to work with here. It's only not ideal, but it's enough to work with here. Fallen, to be fair, hasn't had much effect of the old. Great nade going towards short. Does a ton of damage towards Dupree. 60 to be exact. Yeah, max damage considering he's got armor. Not quite the 100 HE nade that we saw yesterday. No, that was pretty sick. Yeah. But I don't think we'll see that for a while. No, I think that's the only time I've ever seen it while casting. I know it exists, but it's extremely rare. Dupree's going to get boosted as well. Taco's playing in his typical position, so up he goes. Chance to spot it. He's forward of the barrels at this point in time. Thankfully for his sake, because he sits in the open for that headshot from the AK. Taco's going to flash the back off this. They'll drop down there. Should do so immediately after. Just crouch, I guess, for now. So they're still going to commit to that pick. Fallen pushed very far up at long A right now. Has a chance to try and wrap around him behind them. He's on the rifle, so flank is promising. They're going back that direction, though. The question is what Fox does in all this, because again, he's playing the swing position, so he's brought the FAMAS back down toward B side, at least for now. Might be the right call, we'll see. Right side, his right side, left of the entrance where Colt's playing. I mean, it's Taco's gonna have to play in between the wood, and he's got a guess right between the bags. After he's pulled back, he's down, Gabriel gets there in time, but only for one. Okay, we will find the response. Wow. Fox limited on the jungle, smokes <laughs> out, and a great <laughs> shot from Device follows it up. Oh, Fox wow. down, Astralis. Keep adding them up because SK has got no response. Absolutely not. It has to be an at this point. Device is in incredible form right now. If he does make it to the grand final, he is going to be a tough one to contain. Here's the B execution coming in there. Colts are doing what he can on that B side. He only finds one. Instant reply, Kiabi. What a hell of a shot that was. And Device very confident. Seems in his zone right now. Looking comfortable and managing to finish the round off. We do have the force fight. This is the desperate situation. This is the CT oh, now. Needs to start posting rounds. So you got Famuses, UMPs, two M4s. That may seem like an insignificant move, which Device just pulled. He's not going to take advantage of it. He may still. Getting that little run boost off your teammate because by chance he landed on his head, but he's actually on the op, so he could have beat. If Fallen was going park, he actually could have beat him there because of that. Well, there we go. Aggressive towards long. Getting caught out. I thought Fox actually gets to drop on them there, so at least this terrorists know where they are, and they're going to have to reply straight away here. First frag comes in, and fighting back with two lovely kills. That's going to be Fallen's final second, but still, actually got the man advantage for now. Four on two. Fallen did better than I thought he would there because they were both caught behind one rock, one tiny hiding place for two heads, and he manages to get that second kill. As you say, thankfully Fur found one beforehand because it still gives him the man advantage when he inevitably is going to go down. Glaive, good oh. read though, finds Taco pushing very far up considering they're up a man. It's actually a nice read from Taco getting a lot of information. I don't think most teams would actually be expecting that, but Glaive, he's got his number, now goes down to a 2 on 2. This was the 4 on 2 until Device got involved. And now they've got a ton of time, a minute to play with, and now they have a huge advantage. Overpass, a very difficult map to hold these positions by yourself as well. Fur in that one and done position, that would be good enough at the moment to be fair. We'll see whether Device can find any bits of information. We'll have a look at the B side as well. It's going to be Cold Zera. I think he's pushed up towards Shaw right now. Just watching the connector door. Yeah, exactly that. Just watching the players enter the walk-up connector and hopefully into his crosshair. Hopefully so. Forward enough for the bomb site to call for rotation, but very far away. It's oh, fur and long. And they are heading Cold's direction. He's got to have that perfectly lined up for getting closer to him behind him. Go very quickly. Don't expect this position. Good trade back from Device, therefore. As he gets Glaive down, this will put a bomb plant in for half health. Is going to rotate back around the same direction that they came from. But can Device get the read on this? Fur does not have a kit. Yeah, no kit. He has got a couple of flashbangs and low HP as well. It's not looking great. That's uh, operate quite quickly here now. Oh, perfect position for Device, my god. Yeah, perfect in pretty much every situation. No matter where he comes in, he gets a jump on him. If he walks in from the window above, if he comes around the corner from stairs, comes oh. a monster, and he's got it lined up. But first one, the timing, there it is, though. Exactly that. Device still has headshot angle. And another round for Astralis, 10 to 1.
The beautiful stuff there from Device. Just so aware as to what the possibilities are, where the risk could be coming from. He reads it like an absolute book there. Watches him coming from short. Even though he doesn't see him cross over, he knows there's the possibility. Nails the shot as well. 10-1. And that was a force by from SK. It looks like it has to be an eco at this point. And such a horrible time to pull it in as well. So we fall on a scalp. Some CZs, 5-7s. We haven't seen much aggression from the CTs at all. They're always lacking the money. And Fallen's having a little bit of a shock here. Two for 10. One of the maps he's known to be very, very good on indeed. It's being shut down by Device. 14-3 and three for him. A hell of a game. Very impressive Device so far. He's in impeccable form. Fallen's doing what he can. Last time they had the scout, we saw it on the last map on Cash. He actually made it around quite interesting, but far removed from the activity so far. As over toward Monster Tunnel, the first exchange goes through. Zipix actually comes out. 44 HP, but finds a kill onto Taco, and Cold's on 10. Back in that direction, there it is. Falling gets down by the off. Dupree finds two and lower. Cold last alive. 10 HP. Tries to get to the gun. KRB hot on his heels. 11 1. A lot of rounds in a row now for Astralis. Obviously, maximum loss bonus still, but uh, a full buy coming in. Maybe a double orb setup is required at this stage. Desperation normally calls for it, and we'll see whether they bring it to the table. We talk about the inconsistency this year. I think nine different teams, I can't even keep track, have won premier level events this season not in 2016. Yeah, Astral well, that's just it. Not Astralis. And the only team, FaZe had a chance of being in the same position, but the only team left that are the three, including SK obviously still, that haven't won one this year. So we could get yet another winner. That would put 10 different winners they, in 2016. They do meet Optic, Optic which is the good rematch. Final. Yeah, yeah, definitely a good rematch. And it's looking very likely right now. Obviously getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, but from what we're seeing right now, this is a very one-sided affair. We have got a full buy from SK. They get 11-4, right? The, this game's still on. There's still a chance, but that's if they get the rest of these rounds. It's a good time to take a pause right now. Obviously tactical for SK Gaming. We'll have a look at their buy quickly. They've got a AWP and Fallen, of course. Four and fours. They have got kits. It's a full buy with smokes. Only one incendiary. It can be a little bit of an issue to hold off those final executions from the terrorists there, but the unpause comes in. Time to step up here. Be very, very flat indeed. Haven't really got going at all. We haven't really seen that aggression, that flair the Brazilians are known for, and actually getting in the face of the terrorist here. Is waiting for Astralis and losing every encounter, it seems. The rush, maybe? Yep, I'd say so. The Molotovs try and hold off short, push them back if anyone trying to get aggressive. Oh, water, we to funnel themselves in toward Monster, and that's where Taco. Not only is he burned, what alive he takes down Dupree, drops bomb. Finally, Astralis. Shut off early because SK has got to jump on them. They're going to rotate over. Taco's playing the same position. They're lined up. Kierby gets it. He gets predictable in there. He needs to move away. They already know he's playing the position at barrels. He's gotten two kills. He's got to move. But this could catch them off because Cold goes the same position. They're not expecting it twice. He finds one right away. Bomb still dropped inside. And Molotov himself out of that position. I say Glaive. I say himself. Glaive Molotov's him out, but Zipix is still locked off in smoke. He's got it all to do, Glaive, because his teammate's not with him inside the site, therefore. The bomb again. Good pick up. This is pulled it back for. Down Fox to respond. It's all on a Zipix. One versus two. He's not the one with the bomb, so they have to go around to try and grab it. Zipix will do so. They're ready and waiting. Four HP. I think SK, Henry, I think they found round two. Just about, yep. Yeah. It was a four on two, but it got a little bit tense there. But that reads up the lost planet now for SK. So after the pause, Astralis now, okay, they're going to start adjusting towards him. I go aggressive towards middle. I try and find that first pick. Let's go for a B rush. I actually like that a lot, to be fair. But they ran into a lot of utility from SK. They could feel it coming. The flash comes comes over. The Molotov went towards the side as well. And they actually dropped a Molotov in towards Montestano. A nade as well. Did a ton of damage. Another Orc nade here at ECS Finals. And uh, it was well held off there by SK. And now he's got something to work with there. Unfortunately, after going down to a two on two in the end, or two on one, I should say, and managing to get himself in reset potential there. And Fallen can't seem to get rolling here at all. Another shot, he'd be quite comfortable hitting normally. Can't find the kill there to kick things off. He does spot a couple of players crossing the playground, though. Dipex, whoa, crosshair placement was dead on. Old. Evades death as he gets back down on the ground. I think he'll stay there, stay grounded for a minute because no need to jump that again. He'll stay inside of the site for meanwhile. He'll push up inside bathrooms. He may have fallen. A players have Fox supporting this time deep inside the site again, playing that swing rotation. And more and more teams are getting used to on this map. Device, meanwhile, finds Fox, which is behind Furs. The fact that he's passive and Furs not could actually benefit him because they're not expecting him. Catches off Blade. Good response has fallen, finds Kirby as well, but it's traded back. Hold on, because Astralis still have this to a three versus three, which favors them, especially with 56 seconds left. Yeah, we have got Fallen, though. He's just managing to find his third kill of this map so far, but Taco, an audacious player here, could get caught out from T-Spawn. It's going to come down to these timings. Device was ready for it as well, but can't nail the shot just yet. Taco takes him down to 34 HP. He won't be refacing that position just yet, but they know where Taco is at this point. He's a player on short. That's Dupree. Seeing if the rotation comes in, if he can find the next kill here. Waiting by those sandbags. 
Pick up from Taco as he shuffles out to find Zip. Their monster good. It better pick as he finds Dupree as well. Better late than never. SK is starting to find their individual form as he shuts them down on the way through. Oddly enough, round 14, he leads the way in nine frags now for his team. Device, meanwhile, the one left in the one versus three. That's 16. 17. Nice wide peak. Falling, no chance. Nearly gets the lineup on Taco, but low HP goes down. Lovely work from Device. He fought for a second. He had a chance there with that first shot, but it's going to be SK Gaming getting two in a row now. It's going to be the last round, of course. Still a ton of money available for the Danes, Taco. This is what we've come to expect from the Brazilians. Finally starting to show up here. Good kills there towards Monster and Short. The Vice, this was the shot that was quite impressive, was it not? Nice little nose kick there. Taco responding though, so there's escape with three. 11 4. I'll give them a chance with Pistol and perfect economy management in the next half, but I'm still giving it a long shot. 11 4 is possible, 12 3, not so much. So if they get this last round, no business. Just need the Pistol after that. But this is what we wanted to see. They weren't doing this before. Doing the plays we've. Come to know and love of SK, getting the next with confidence. This is why. Device doesn't expect that coming. Two kills a fur. This is better now. Much better. We saw Cole get taken down on that earlier in the weekend, but Fur's made up for it. Pulls back away. He's on 48 HP, and they get out for free as well. This is actually a very, very good start to the round. Minute 20 still to work with for them. They can get a little more passive inside of the sights. Kirby, knowing so, will try and take advantage of that by getting up toward long, and they are going to continue on to this A aggression. Interestingly enough, Fox, again, playing this wing, is down in the window, which does... Basically, given the fastest rotation on the other side, obviously, you can see into the B site. But that's anticipating the fact that two kills at long is going to shuffle them away. Better pick from Fur. Well, after this pause, three rounds in a row, Matt, so not too shabby at all. That's if everything goes to plan at this stage, of course. It's going to be a five on two. Heavily favored for SK, and it looks like Fallen should be picking another pick here as well. He's actually got a decent crosshair pick, but there it is. Legs up, Dupree can't find a kill just yet, but he gets the information. That should be the rotations called at this point. Flashes start to come in, just trying to lock them out as long as possible. Behind truck gets taken down. The one that has all the kills so far. Good response to all six out both, but as we said, the rotations were coming in. Fox and Fur. There it is. He's the one. Doing? So it was Fox instead that actually went down, but Fur gets caught off. You're dead, right? No need to go that aggressive. Zipix now is a one versus two. This is this is ludicrous. The fact they've even given an opportunity. Five on two at one point. And as a result, Taco's already left to go to B because he knows Zipix was heading that direction. Has to read it. Problem is that's two one on ones. If Zipix, oh, this is gone. Pulls out the bomb. Good position from Cold. Gonna catch him. So 11-4. They do get to the score line. We said was the only possible scenario left for them. A wow. long task. They did win second half pistol in the first game when they were behind. Yeah, well, a good recovery to be fair. Going that far down, I think it was 10 1 points and they're managing to bring that to 11 4. All things considered, that's okay. I'll take it. And we'll see what happens here. If they can win the pistol, we might be onto something here. It's round number one of the second half here. 11 4 in favor of the Danes, looking incredibly strong, especially Device as well. 17 kills for him after the first half. Fallen, as we said, his, uh, his nemesis, the counter Orpa. We'll be on three for 13, so he's not really showing up as of yet, but not an influential kill in the previous round. We'll see what happens here when we go into the pistol. The buy comes in, two smokes, three sets of armor. Superman buy for tackle as well, tech nine and armor. And the buy's looking for that initial headshot. Can't land it just yet, but Dupree, he's getting lively towards the monster tunnel, looking for a headshot on Taco here. Shot deep and falls away. Rotate over towards Sandbags instead. Taco's gonna wait for that tech nine from far. He's the Superman play again. Fallen as always, team player be the team utility. And slowly but surely they are going back over toward the A side as well. Smoke's more, I guess if you've only got one. Yeah, if you get through Monster Tunnel safely, you can put it out on top of the site, plant inside it. But with A, you can lock off a lot more potential positions where pistols are going to be burrowed. Three over to B as well for Astralis. Hold zero. We'll just watch to make sure they don't pop out. It's Dupree. It's going to be occupied. Should give the confidence to SK to get a little more forward. Fox just double checks to make sure stairs are clear before they turn their backs to it and start looking toward the A site. Fern Fallen again, always in tandem working to try and push back Device. Wait for the smoke because Fallen's got it out in that position. I highly anticipate it's going to land almost where Device is now. Yeah, this will be an execution. You can see the long control. Three players towards short as well. Smoke's in the bonsai here and Device is trying to kick them down with the back. Comes in. What a great way to kick things off there. Takes down Fur. Massive shot. Smoke didn't come in just yet. Fallen's only thrown it now, so they actually put it back stairs, which means they still have a chance if Device wants to pop back out, but there's a smoke in front of him as well. He's got to try and walk back through and bomb. Just getting in position. Device wins a second. That boost up is working as well because Fox is occupied. They can slip him behind. He's got good position, mind you. If he can stay here undetected, they're going to have to pass him at some point in time, even with the man advantage. 
firmly in their favor. Fox, he's the wild card in all of this. Zipix, meanwhile, trying to get on the flank. He's going to spot out Fallen, not ready for this at all. Turns around, right. manages to somehow win the duel. Far range as well with the Glock. And now Fox, prime position, said he would be there. Has to try and follow this up and watch to his left. It's a crossfire. It's a blunder. Both go to the knife. Gold's going to win it off. And then there is a knife because the Vice comes back around. Oh my oh! god. The Vice with two in one round. That's insane. And he's going to get the defuse on the back of it as well. That is absolute pandemonium. Replay on device right now. What the hell just happened there? Device opened things up with two kills. The pistol, the knife's two of them. What is going on? A, such a huge pistol round as well. Like you said, Fox is in a prime position to lock it down. It looked like it was going very successfully. Let's find out what happened. He pulls out the knife, runs out of ammo. Okay, oh bunny my hop God. in. There's one. Keep going. Why not? Boom. Oh my god, he was, it wasn't even that he switched to it for a call, he was out of ammo the whole time. How much money has this guy got now? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, so he gets uh, the M4, all the nades required as well, and the defuse kit. It's a bit of a blunder for SK, two knife kills. Very, very rare indeed. And Fox, it's caught in the reload. That's so frustrating, and look at this, flash in, perfect timing, Zipix with three. Fur gets the response, but it may not matter. Astralis is just running with this now as Dupree clutches out Taco. Last player pinched off already. It's Fur down to 22. Okay, then. <laughs> Close line. Pre fire, doesn't matter. 13 rounds of Astralis. Right. Let's calm down, everyone. It's all fine. They get the AKs out on the third. Round number 18. Astralis. What a crazy, crazy pistol that was. Not so much a report in the second round, no force by coming from SK in the second. They will be buying on this one though, so they get the AKs out and it will be fine. Across the board they have some utility to work with as well. Normally when we've seen him on this map before, especially at this tournament, it's been focused towards the B bomb site, trying to get those executions rolling. It looks like they may be heading there once again. Three players actually can make it four heading to that side of the map. They've got the smokes to work with here. So they won't just be rushing in, they'll just be slowing things down, wait for any sort of aggression in the CTs. And Zipex. Oh, gets away with his life just about there, gets headshot through the wall instead of a, a straight up headshot. So he is under 47 HP instead. I'm still baffled. Who gets an ace with two knives in it? It's Fur. I'm sit back and wait for the execution. The reaction times it perfectly. They take it right away. Flash back in. That's twice they've gone aggressive to catch off SK. Getting caught a little bit off guard. Not something we commonly see from the Brazilian side. It just speaks testament to their current state right now. And they're down to just three of these AKs remaining. Cole's going to wait to try and watch back in case anyone walks out from Squeaky. But Fox is now there as well. Glaive continues to try and spray through said smoke monster. Now back away together. Zipix stays inside of the site. Cold's got to go hunting. Molotov will distill in behind the barrels, not surprisingly, and Fallen. Taking advantage of that push. Deep that to try to flip in. Give it away though, Zipix. Carelessly walks out cold. Oh, he has more ammo. Definitely a kill for him there, but either way, it didn't matter. Kirby hot on his heels. 14-4. Astralis all but done because money gone on the SK side. Dupree, what a fantastic play this was from Short. Perfect flashbang. That's the synergy we're talking about with these top teams. He gets flashing by the teammate after they took the headshot at the start of the round as well. And Zipex got the wall bang there, Matt. That's actually kind of nuts considering the situation as well. Lovely work by him. 14 4, and you have to force into these rounds. Unfortunately, oh no, actually, maybe not. They're going to take two players all in, which is interesting. So it's three of them not forcing in, and Calder and Taka do. Surely you want to keep your money. It's either one or the other, right? In these scenarios, you're going to have two players extremely limited in the next rounds. Presumably you're not going to win this one. Okay then. We'll see where we can get the bomb down here and balance things out. But they're going to take a shot from the NWP to kick things off and the nade, the alley oop to finish it off. And KRB can find the second kill as well. This is looking very, very bleak for SK. They're going to go in with two players on pistols next round. And we'll be at uh, fourth stage loss bonus, but probably enough. Ooh. Okay then, Cold Zera. That works. At least for now. That works better though. Device up close takes him back with the AWP. 15 to 4. We've got a rematch of the E League finals potentially on our hands. Only a week later as well in Astralis. They beat them early on in this tournament as well. The first game of the group, they actually were successful in that, that endeavor. So this is a very optimistic and promising final for them. It's a tantalizing prospect for everyone here as well, and definitely everyone tuning in online. Device will stick with the AWP, no surprise. Guns will be bought in whatever form they can for SK. They've got a Deagle on Taco and a UMP. I find it weird they actually invested two players into that last one. You can see now they've got a Deagle on Taco. Cold Zero just the UMP. Sure, players that can use that weapon, but if you want to have AK, sure, boost the chance of actually winning this round going forward. As we go into potentially the last round of this series here, second map hasn't really lived up to expectations here, but we'll see whether SK Gaming can hold on. We open the hands of Device once more. He's towards Long for now, and the smoke comes in towards Bathroom. It's pretty much a default for now. SK again trying to get some mid control at this point. 
got one player in the form of Kiabi towards the bar from just backing up the vice slightly and allowing them to have some mid-control for now as Glaive rotates it back towards A. Dupree. Oh, attacker just with Deagle as well. This is perfect if Dupree can find him. Backs away smartly though on it. Doesn't want to get caught off entirely because it is a gun down. There's no one there to support a trade. He wants to be fast. Jumping in, they're able to catch him off. Dupree does win that duel against Taco. The UMP kill now gives an M4 to Cold Zero. He'll upgrade immediately. And they continue to put pressure onto Long A to try and push back device. Smoke down the corridor. Sit just a little bit longer. Not going for that park sign boost to try and get him above and see the elevation of it. Meanwhile, they'll group, coagulate inside of the bathrooms and try and take a different approach, a faster approach, a device, or other, excuse me, Dupree spraying into that. You lining him up again with the flash Great in. Damage. Fox goes to 47. Glaive's caught off the open. Has to watch for that because Cold still has his chance to secondary peak that position. Down three versus three. Shot in from the vice misses. But he's got to be careful because he misses a second. They're getting ever closer. Cold might be low, but he's got the lineup and device. He might have to go to a knife again if he keeps running out of ammo. Guys find the shot on Defer. Dupree pacing as well. Is going to wrap it up. And Astralis are back in a final. And back up against Optic. Super strong performance there, especially from Device. What a game they've just had. Sending out a message to Optic. They're coming for that grand final, and they're looking to win here. An incredible form. We weren't sure they would continue it from the group stages, but that is very clear indeed. Amazing performance overall. 16-4 to close out the series. Well played, as well as. Extremely well played. And again, the problems persisted on the CT side for SK. Obviously, like you said, sure. after the timeout, they were able to pick up some rounds. But you can wonder, they've got more timeouts available to them now. They're shorter, yes. Why not use them when you can? They just looked uninspired for us. They didn't, towards the end after the pause, they thought, okay, we need to get aggressive. But we need to let our star players actually have the chance to find picks here. We're getting picked up one by one. We don't really have that synergy to go with here. And it was a good adjustment. The 11 4, it was possible. But after that pistol map, the two knife kills and an ace. What the hell is going on? That's incredible, too, because he starts to go for the first one, realizes, wait, I've got to go to my right and finds two, luckily gets a reload in from Fox. Incredible performance, hey, and look for SK, we said it, every game they can play in this tournament, making through the playoffs, is better because they get more time with Fox, more preparation for the major, but for Astralis, Dupree said in a tweet, he didn't think they would win a tournament this year. They've had two chances in two weeks, they've got another one coming up just in a few, I, I, half hour to an hour, I'm not sure exactly the time frame, but in a few hours, and against Optic again, they're going to be ready for that. Absolutely. It's going to be a really interesting final. The rematch of E-League. It couldn't be a better storyline going forward. Optic got better than last time. It's going to be a sensational grand final. Well, I that, cannot wait. That said as well, Dupree is standing by with Smix to talk us through that and to get ready for Optic. Thank you very much, Sadikis, and congratulations, Dupree. In just two weeks, Astralis is headed into the grand finals uh, once again, I mean, this must feel like the best form of validation for your team as it's continually improved under Glaive. Oh yeah, definitely. It's very great to be in another semi uh, grand final, that is, not semi final. Um, yeah, we're extremely happy and we just come off from U-League where we were in the grand final as well. And going into the grand final here was, uh, I think we expected it in some way, because uh, we know we're very confident in the way we play. So going to the grand final was at least a goal, so now we just have one more obstacle to overcome. Well, before we talk about that uh, upcoming matchup with Optic, let's talk briefly about this series against SK. I know that normally you guys don't like cash very much, but knowing that SK has liked that map at this tournament, did you guys sort of expect that to come up and did you prepare specifically? Um, I think it came down to, for a long time we've been playing train against SK because SK have had their, their winning streak and they have been very confident on the map. It's been very good for us as well. And I think right now, I don't think either of the team wants to pick train because that will be an advantage for the other team because we're both so good on it. So I think they, they tried something new this time because we banned out Cobblestone, so, um, which we, we don't really like to play. Um, so we decided to, they decided to play cash against us, which we haven't really played that much. But uh, in the end, it just, we, we play confident, we play what we have learned and what we've done in practice, so it worked out for us. So, yeah. Well, you hinted at it, you guys will be playing Optic one more time. That is, of course, a rematch of the E-League Finals. In that Finals, a lot of people considered your team the favorite, so I can't help but feel like you must want that revenge even more. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I still think right now, well, since Update beat us last time, they're going to be the favorites. And last time, people saw us as the favorite. Uh, and it's going to be fun to see if that does something to the series. And uh, just speaking of this potential chance to become champions, I know for you especially, uh, for you and the three others that have been part of this core team, it must mean a lot because it has been over a year since you've been able to take home a trophy. So what would it mean for you personally to be able to come home with the trophy here? Well, mainly it'll be like Christmas came early. Um, it's been the goal for, for over like for the entire year to win something. We haven't done it yet. Uh, we managed to go into grand finals now, which is really great, and we overcome the the semifinal obstacle, which we've had for a long time. So, yeah, if we win this one, it's going to be like Christmas came earlier, and we're going to be extremely happy to to finish off the year with a with a title win. So that's that's definitely the goal. 
Well, I'm definitely looking forward to that rematch. Best of luck in that Grand Finals. And guys, with that said, we do have our Grand Finals match set. It will be Optic versus Astralis. Indeed it will. Thank you very much, Sue. Congrats to Dupree and to Astralis. That's right, we have our grand final set. Some things change and some things stay the same. Two weeks on, it's Optic versus Astralis once more before we get down to talking about our grand final. Of course, plenty to dissect from our second matchup. It was another 2-0 sweep. Sean Garris is back with Yanko here in the analysis area. Sean, first of all, a uh, great victory from Astralis. They look fantastic all the way through. Yeah, it wasn't even close. Like, I've, I've actually never seen SK get demolished like that. Fallen couldn't find his rhythm. He was constantly looking for new angles. And I think it all started, um, they got kind of fortunate to even win the first gun round when those two guys jumped past cold. He was full white, blind. Form. We saw no scopes from him in the first half on this on overpass as well. He just seemed to be playing with a bundle of confidence. He was definitely feeling it in, the, in this series. He's yeah. totally unafraid to take peaks. Um, he opened up so many rounds for them in this series. Device is literally on top of his game right now, and I think he's ready to play Optic. <laughs> I, I think it's him and the whole team is playing like that. And yeah, the, the big talking point about Astralis, obviously, with all the semi-final thing, was that at times they were playing not to lose instead yeah. of playing to win. And if that type of playstyle is anything, that's playing to win. That's yeah. like <laughs> knives out, no scopes, I don't care. I, I'll take the, the, the fight against anyone, anywhere, at any time. Yeah, I mean, so I, it's great to see. I think in the interview, Dupree even got confused that they were actually in the final. <laughs> uh, he's used to going to semi final so often, <laughs> even he thought they were in the semi final. Um, but joking aside, it's great for them to having broken the, the barrier of that sort of three, four finishes that they had all the time and finally reach finals. And we often see that with teams, don't we? They sort of have that barrier of, uh, you know, can't get out of groups and they go through a year without getting out of groups. And suddenly they get out once and then there's a roll of it. And it just seems like a momentum based kind of what, why is it? Why does that happen so often in CS? It's something that's probably the most difficult thing to quantify in CS, which, you know, everyone who's 
has been playing and who's been around the scene, you know the importance of, you know, psychology for CS yeah. and having like the mental fortitude and how, you know, the, the reason for that is that single win, it, they think they broke the curse, right? They mm -hmm. believe, okay, like we did it now, now we can do it every time. Yeah. And the way they changed their approach towards the game because of the, that one thing is the biggest difference maker. Certainly the players didn't become you know, 50% better in a span yeah. of two weeks no, or that the, they the, the, found a new way to play Counter-Strike. It's just the mentality has changed and you play with a lot more confidence and, and you have uh, a lot more trust in yourself and, and in your teammates. Okay, Sean, we've uh, got a, a player comparison that we had earlier on. Of course, we've picked out a couple of players for you. And uh, Kiabi on the Australian side having a very good game again. Kodzia also putting up some numbers there. Difficult to have good numbers, Sean, when, you're not, when your team's not really doing very well. Yeah, I'm actually surprised his numbers are that that good because his team got totally railroaded on that second map. Um, it was even an off game for Colt though, watching him, he was struggling to find openings at B, and I think a lot of situations where he would get two kills, three kills, he would typically walk away with one and two mm. instead, like one less than what he would normally come away with. Um, the one exception being that first gun round on overpass where he got the two kills after being full white. Mm. It was similar for Fallen as well. You saw a couple of situations towards the A bomb set, towards toilets, when he's, you know, objectively in an unfavorable situ situation. But we see Fallen in that close range around toilets. He gets like tri triple kills and stops the, the opponents right then and there. Didn't really happen this time around. And when you combine all those small pieces together, you get such a dominating score line that, yeah. that we saw. Uh, in terms of Fox, where, where, how do you feel now you've had the whole tournament to assess where he's fit in. I know it's still very early for, for uh, SK, but how, how do you think he's sort of adapted to the team and how have they adapted to him? I think it's way too early to be able to judge. I think he had a poor performance throughout the tournament, but he is putting you know himself in harm's way for the team in a yeah. sense. He will do whatever it takes and whatever the team asks and, and wants from him. And I just feel that the they will look better for the for the major because they will have more time to implement him into the system, to you know have uh, a wider playbook and, and things that they can uh, fall back on. And you have to also take note that Fox hasn't played for a long time. I yeah. mean, in a competitive environment, so he's just called up five days before a tournament, fly to another continent, and you have to play with the former best team in the world yeah. against some of the best in the scene. That's not an easy thing. To do so he himself needs more time individually to get back into the group yeah sure and sean what are your yeah, thoughts i actually think this is the worst we'll ever csk probably like mm -hmm. ever again um they're the most tactical team in counter-strike and they picked up someone as a stand-in a week ago who came from probably the least tactical <laughs> pro team in phase like they're running nothing similar to what FaZe ran. They're playing different maps even. FaZe yeah. didn't even play much overpass back no. then. Yeah, back then they didn't play it at all. Yeah. So, like, Fox is doing totally new things in his CS arsenal. And I think he has a lot to learn. And SK can teach him that. Under Fallen, there will be improvements before the major, for even sure. Even with all of that, they still make the semis yeah. of, of another big yeah. tournament. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that just tells you how... Maybe not the best team in the world, as, as uh, their manager pointed out, but still a very strong team. Yeah, indeed. Uh, let's recap them for you. We are, of course, heading towards the grand final. We've still got a little bit of time to get there, and we are going to take an extended break after this particular part of the show. But let's recap where we are at the ECS Season 2 Finals. Group A, as we saw yesterday, completed by Astralis, routing the teams in the upper bracket. And Optic Gaming coming through with a lot of resilience in the bottom half of the bracket, having to dispose of their North American rivals Cloud9 and of course their North American rivals in the form of FaZe, maybe not in players but at least in organisational terms in Group A. Did you manage to catch much of the two groups over the weekend? What have, what have you been doing? Have I you been like, busy? Yeah, I caught like half the games, the other half I was kind of like preparing stuff. Um, but yeah, Astralis has looked dominant throughout the entire tournament, but Optic has had a very impressive run. Mm -hmm. I watched the Cloud9 game, the FaZe game, and now this past game that they won versus Envious, like they're definitely a very hot team right now. And I think both teams show a lot of similarities. Like you said, they, ha they had struggles, struggles, struggles. And then once they figured out that they can do it, the confidence came to them and here they are again yeah. in another finals. Yeah, yeah, it's incredible how they yeah. bounce back as well. I mean, especially when they had such a good first map against Cloud9, then had a great start and almost a great middle against Cloud9, 15-7, match point, yeah. nine match points, and they lose all of them and then lose in overtime. I mean, that would actually hurt a lot of teams. A lot of teams wouldn't even bounce back from that. They'd be shattered by it. Yeah, I, I was watching that live, actually. I think I sent out a tweet. I, was, I couldn't believe it. That, yeah. that was the phase game, right? The yeah. new game? Yeah, for them to come back and dominate the third map like they did just shows that Optic is actually a huge contender right now in the scene. Mm. Yeah, where do you rate them at the moment? 
at the end of the year? I have no idea, Paul. I mean, they went up to number six in the no NHL idea. TV like, rankings. Like you feel like they deserve to be rated and to say, okay, they are 50-50 with Astralis in this grand final, but somehow everyone's still favoring Astralis yeah. because of the history, the name and everything. But Oblik has been playing remarkably well recently. And for such a young team, they're like the oldest players are 22. Yeah. Uh, to have the mental fortitude, as, as Sean pointed out, in the phase game after, you know, losing to that comeback in the second map to come to uh, make uh, such to have such a dominating performance in the third map. Uh, I, I think that if they manage to beat Astralis here in the grand final, then you definitely put them in like top 10, top 8, what, wherever you, you want to uh, in, in terms of just achievements. Like two of the biggest tournaments probably towards the end of the year and they win both. Yeah. Even without that, making the finals is again just a, an amazing performance yeah. for them to end the three year. Three out of four as well. Three out of the last yeah. four tournaments yeah. they've attended. They've, they've reached the grand final. It's, that's incredible when you look at it on paper. Very few teams have done that all year. Yeah. It just seems that... I don't know, you know them better because you're from North America, but they just seem like a quiet team all around. You don't have someone, maybe Mixwell is a little bit of that type of a player who's a bit more aggressive, playmaker type, but they all just seem so laid back. And when you have a team like that, you kind of, you look at them and it looks like they don't expect much from themselves in, in a sense, and they have these, these great results. Uh, hold on, laid back. Have you watched Tarek's streams? <laughs> I mean, okay, come I on mean, now. I mean, streams. <laughs> streams are one thing. Um, I was talking to Tarek actually outside um, just after his match, and he was very, he was calm about it, but he was also a little bit sort of like, mm, yeah, another final, mm, yeah, Stralis, whatever. Mm. He, he was always a bit, he almost said, you know, like, just feels like people don't give us enough credit. They don't, they don't think we were lucky. They think we were lucky or we fluked this. And I, yeah. and I said to him, you, you've been in three, four, if you've won one final all year and nothing else, then okay, you could probably say it's a fluke. But three finals, Sean, out of four, that's not a fluke, is it? Yeah, they're about to get the recognition they deserve, I think, after this tournament. Um, they're, they're actually for real. They, they can play six maps very well. And not many teams in the world can yeah. say that right now. Like, SK was one of those teams before the roster change, but surely Dignus is probably is Dignus and NIP probably the only yeah. two teams, other than Verse Pro, I guess, three. It's going up. But also, yeah. I mean, long-standing and tenured <laughs> teams, right? With, with a lot of experience, yeah. especially yeah. VP. So for Octic to be able to achieve that, and they've been slowly improving like throughout the year. Uh, Pro League uh, Finals, Season 3, that's where they also upset uh, Astralis in, in a best of one. And they had, you know, New York again, beating them, beating G2. It's like slowly but surely they mm. had these results. But then all of a sudden they start beating people in best of threes and make finals of tournaments. So yeah. it, that in the last three months, it was like a huge leap from them. Mm. All right, let's take a look at uh, Group B and wrap up uh, Group B and how that panned out. Of course, there were plenty of surprises in store for the two teams that came in with replacements, SK Gaming and Dignitas. Has. Dignitas has winning that opening game, and actually SK at that point looked like a forlorn team. They did drop down, however, and beat their local friends from Brazil Immortals, and then got revenge on Dignitas has to come through that. The surprise, perhaps, though, Yanko in Group B was Envy. Actually, Paul, I have to cut you off here. I realized Fallen is a prophet, right. and his pose on the picture which baffled me <laughs> yesterday, that's actually him after the game right now against Astralis. That's the like, what, what, just happened? what just happened? <laughs> so he knew it the whole time. He uh, was doing that on Thursday, I think. The pictures were done, done on Thursday yeah, for that. So the he guy's knew. genius. He's an he knows everything. He knows everything. Yeah, he's an oracle. But yeah, MV upsetting the, the, the apple cart in Group B was a bit of a surprise to everyone. And then obviously they've fallen short in the semi-finals. But again, another team who've had a, a very odd year. Uh, I know they've won at least one Premier Tournament, but when they look back, that's not good enough for a, a, a team of their calibre. Yeah, more than anything else, the surprise was thrashing Dignitas on Nuke, because <laughs> it's like nu Nuke is uh, one of the best maps for Dignitas. Granted, they played with a stand-in, and that's what baited them. We have seen the semi-final <laughs> today, right? I, I feel that that's the reason why they went for the Nuke pick against right. Optic, instead of Dust 2, which has been their strongest map uh, with this roster. So we were talking about it yesterday, saying how we're looking forward to seeing Envy, you know, whether they can keep up that level of form. Did they get their confidence back? Can they make uh, the grand finals again? But that didn't seem to be the case. They were just manhandled by Optic. Mm. Do you feel, Sean, like if there wasn't a major just around the corner, we'd be seeing sweeping changes in a number of the biggest teams, or at least the big Probably. name teams? Probably so. I think a huge problem is the roster lock that the major caused. Um, that's part of the reason why perhaps SK didn't pick up Phelps, because it's not even a possibility to use him at the major. Yeah. Um, you think they might pick him up afterwards, though? It could, it could be a possibility. I don't mm -hmm. know. I don't know what his situation is with Immortals, if he enjoys it there. Um, they're actually a really good team, and I think they probably should have beaten SK on train in this tournament. Yeah. They definitely blew a few rounds when I watched that game. Um, 
yeah, I don't know. It's, it, it'll be interesting to see what happens after the major, though, for yeah, sure. I think that's what we're looking forward to in the new year, isn't it? Yeah. Major, obviously, and then what happens the week afterwards and where does everyone go yeah. and where do they end up? And, and it's insane because as soon as the major ends, all the leagues uh, start again, yeah. right? And you basically have to make changes and jump into official game. Yeah. And then we get into the vicious circle yet again <laughs> where teams have officials all the time and travel and no time to actually practice. So yeah. it will definitely be interesting to see yeah, uh, how it uh, unfolds. Indeed. Let's uh, take a look at your semi-final then for the ECS Season 2 Championship Finals here in Anaheim. The semi-finals were set yesterday after the group stages end. They look a little bit like this. There we go. Astralis against SK Gaming, which you've just seen. Astralis coming through in dominant form with a 2-0 thumping of the major, double major champions in 2016. MV also on the receiving end of a bit of a beating, frankly by the dream green machine of Optic Gaming. Do you like that? Sean liked that one. Yeah, is that, is that the thing that's out back? That I think that's, a, that's some, sort of, it's some sort of refuse collection area and it says the dream, oh no, it says the green zone. The green zone. Yeah, and Tarek, we joked with Tarek and Tommy said to him, this is like where you've dumpstered all the teams, right? <laughs> I think Tarek actually wants to take a photograph out there now of throwing Jordan into one of the, those pits. <laughs> it's definitely interesting. I mean, what, uh, when you look at it here, we have like we had two very one-sided semi-finals. Usually it's the other way around. We have very close semis, then a boring final. So I hope that this means that we're going to have a very exciting and, and close grand final. Difference being that Optic throughout their run at the tournament, they had to grind out games, they had to come back at times while up while Astralis, they're just walk in the park for yeah. them. They, they basically yeah, that, well, they, is that tough for them though, Yanko? Because they haven't really been tested yet. And sometimes when you're not tested, you're you're not really playing to your best. I know they played fantastically in that last game, but they you, haven't been you tested. See, I think that would have been the case if this is the first time they play Optic in a grand final. They could, which is maybe what they were maybe complacent a little in, bit in, in the league grand yeah. final because they had such a difficult run to the finals. But here, a combination of them already losing last week. And the fact that they want revenge for that, I think they're going to be out for blood. Mm. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you in particular to you, Sean. Thanks you for coming down and joining us and fighting the LA traffic. It's been yeah. much appreciated. <laughs> and thanks to Yanko as well. We will, of course, see Yanko back after the break. We are headed to an extended break now, though. And then in around about 32 minutes and 12 seconds, the grand final will begin. That's right. We have an extended break. So go and grab some lunch, some food, have some rest and then get ready for a fantastic end to 2016 in terms of Premier Tournaments as we try and crown the 36th Champion of the Year. Is it going to be Astralis or Optic? We'll find out in about 30 minutes. <laughs>